All right, all right, all right. We are here talking 49er football, of course, and talking about the offense. I got a text message this morning. The person asked a question, and I thought about it, and I'm like, man, I don't know the answer. Maybe y'all do. We'll figure it out together. Have people figured out the Kyle Shanahan scheme? We're going to talk about that and much more right here on the San Francisco 49ers Morning Show. Let's effing go. Intercepted. It is picked off by Aaron Crocker. Over midfield. He'll run it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. The Crop Talk TV Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the San Francisco 49ers Morning Show. I'm your host, former NFL and AFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And of course, man, y'all know where to find me. You know, everywhere on Twitter, at Eric underscore Crocker. Obviously, you tuned in to the YouTube channel. And by the end of this or the middle of this, if you figure out, you know what, kind of like this show and the vibe, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. This show is always sponsored and powered by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy, download the app or go to underdogfantasy.com. And when you deposit, whatever you deposit, <laughs> uh, Underdog Fantasy, they'll double your deposit up to $100. So if you deposit $50, they'll add $50 to that. If you deposit $100, they will add $100 to that. If you deposit $150, they're only adding $100. All right, so you can might as well just stop at uh, $100. But uh, be weary because it, it becomes a little, uh, I don't want to say... Uh, you know, contagious, but what's the, what's the other word? Not contagious. And y'all know what I'm trying to say, man. Addictive. Addictive. That's the word. That's the word. All right. So, um, hell yeah, man. Uh, download the app. Use promo code Crocky and all that good stuff. All right. Y'all know y'all can find me on Locked On 49ers, uh, Locked On NFL Draft. Come at you five days a week on both of those shows. You can find them anywhere you listen to all of your streams. But enough of all that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got Mike Shields here. He says, good morning, Coach Desi. was fire? I'll say this, and I text I texted her this morning or yesterday evening, and uh, I said, that was probably the most, matter of fact, I, and I haven't went back and looked, that's the first video like where we go on in the morning that I got 100% likes, the first time I've ever gotten 100% likes. So uh, that was amazing, and I'm pretty sure a lot of it was because of Coach Desi, she was awesome and gave great insight, and that's what we try to do on the show. Bring a lot of good insight. So shout out to Coach Desi. She was great. She was great. Got to bring her on again. She said She said for sure. It's all good. All right, let's talk about Kyle Shanahan, man. Let's talk about Kyle. Let's talk about this offense. And let's talk about, is the NFL, are, are they on to it? Have they figured it out? And I always kind of hate that, right? Like, have they have they figured it out? Or they figured out, uh, I don't know, uh, Aaron Rodgers. They figured out Colin Kaepernick, right? And I always feel like, man, it's on the coaching staff to create a, a solution, to whatever people feel like they figured out, so, uh, create a, a, a counter to it. And when you look at the 49ers, it's like, hey, what's the counter? But I got a text this morning, and the text said this. Have people figured out the Shanahan scheme? Now, first of all, let, let's talk about what the Shanahan scheme is, all right? The Shanahan scheme kind of is a hybrid of one. You had Mike Shanahan, the dad, and what he ran. And then... Kyle Shanahan got into coaching. When Kyle Shanahan got into coaching, he got into coaching under Kubiak. So there are a lot of things, like if you watch a Kubiak-led offense and you watch Kyle Shanahan, fairly similar. I think they have a lot of very similar principles. And then you see all of these different uh, coaches that have either come up under Kyle Shanahan and McVay is there. McDaniels is there. Uh, LaFleur's, both of them, right? There are a bunch of them. There are a bunch of them. And... You start to look at some of the main guys that we've heard about, right? So you got Kyle Shanahan, you got uh, uh, McVeigh, you got Lafleur, and even we'll even throw in uh, Zach Taylor into this. All right. So the Niners right now three and four, and we keep asking this question every week, like the offense, the offense, the offense. Like they gotta figure it out. Well, I don't know about y'all, but I know I keep asking these questions every week, right? Like, man, the offense is something not quite right. Uh, the Rams, they're three and three right now. Now, maybe we could say it's the quarterback, right? You know, this is a team that did very well last year. 49ers did well last year. But I don't know. Looking a little weird there, right? Their offense isn't their strength right now. The Packers. The Packers, and I have it written down here, but I, I just got to fact check to make sure. They are, man. The Packers are three and four. All right, the Packers are three and four, and that's what Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. And then you got the Bengals with Zach Taylor. He came up under kind of that same – uh, scheme as well. He's four and three, and even then, there's been times where that offense is like, man, you got 
these weapons that nobody can stop. How is this offense not the best in the league every single week out there? So you look at the 49ers, I think early on you could say, oh, well, Kyle Shanahan, you know, it takes time, it takes time to build this up. And I think Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch have done a terrific job of adding weapons. You look at the 49ers' weaponry. That is not the issue. Now, we can say offensive line. My, I would, I would kind of counter that with, I, I bet if you polled, all 32 NFL teams, you probably get about 26 to 28 of them to say, we wish our offensive line was a little better. So I'm not going to use the offensive line as an excuse. You, you got to figure that out, figure, you know, figure out how to counter that. All teams have O-line issues. Matter of fact, the Cincinnati Bengals went to the Super Bowl with a bad O-line, right? Their quarterback got like hit and sacked more than any other quarterback in the league. And they went to the Super Bowl with that. So offensive lines, you got to figure that out. I'm not letting that be an excuse. So if I can't blame the offensive line. And I can't blame the weapons because the 49ers have terrific weapons. I, lot, I know a lot of people are going to go to the quarterback position. And it, contrary to popular belief, and trust me, I see all the messages about Greg Pinelli and some of his stuff, but I don't think it, it's all bad. I, I, don't, I don't think it's bad to the extent with, with Jimmy Garoppolo for the offense to be this... Uh, uneven I guess you could say I, I don't think it's bad to that I don't think I don't think Jimmy is bad to that extent I think there are moments where it's just like ah Jimmy probably can't overcome that right kind of is who he is but just in the sense of like can you get more out of the offense with Jimmy Garoppolo I believe so I believe so I believe you can get a little bit more out of it so then we got to go back to the coach the head coach the guy that orchestrates this whole thing, the guy that has all these weapons, the guy that put this team together, and it is a talented roster. It wasn't until you see this team three and four right now that you start to question, like, uh, okay, well, what about this on the on the roster? This, but heading into this year, I mean, like, man, I would say maybe five teams have a better roster than the 49ers heading into this year. And even with the injuries, I think they're when you have this type of offense, you should be able to overcome some of that, right? You shouldn't only give up, you shouldn't only score 14 points against the, against the Falcons. So. The question is, have teams figured out this offense? And is Kyle not able to adjust? Is Kyle not able to create a counter to what these teams are doing against him? Is it legitimately because Jimmy Garoppolo? I don't think to the extent of what we've seen from this offense because in the past, we have seen a better version of the offense we have seen a better version so i did get some um other numbers from my guy who shot me this text message and let me go to it real quick hold on here we go so the 49ers are ranked 14th in the nfl with their offense and i would say with who they have offensively that's likely a letdown right even with jimmy garoppolo even if you say oh jimmy g even with jimmy g i think the 14th best offense that's not good the rams 26th ranked. The Packers with Aaron Rodgers, 20th ranked. Now, again, we could look at, you could blame some of the youth over there in Green, Green Bay, and I think you can always find, like, an excuse as to why something's not going. But then when I look at some of these other teams, and I like to see, what are the Seahawks ranked offensive? Let me try to pull up some stats here. Let me try to pull up some stats. Because the Seahawks, they are, they're, they're, they're cooking right now. They are cooking. And maybe, now I just, this isn't a team stat, but I just went to QBR. Who are the QBR leaders in the NFL right now? And Geno Smith is fourth. Now, again, here is my question. All right, here's my question. Let me get this hot girl's person out of here real quick. But here's my question. And I'm, all, I'm, I'm really big on being able to get the most out of whatever you have. Right, get the get the most out of it, and I don't think the 49ers are getting the most out of what they have right now. Who the hell is the offensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks? That has Geno Smith, a guy who has been a journeyman, a guy who people laughed at. All right, a guy that people laughed at with starting for the Seattle Seahawks. Right, he's the punchline of jokes, no pun intended. Who is the offensive coordinator for Seattle to have Geno Smith have the fourth highest QBR in the NFL? Who like who is that? And here's another good stat: San Francisco is 20th in points per game. I I, I think that that is a little ridiculous. And I see my guy Hicks in here. He says Jimmy Footwork is 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 horrible. All right, we can talk about Jimmy Footwork and all that. But 
we're in the sense of getting the most out of your players. I think this is something else that falls back on Kyle Shanahan. So I did get some messages and I trust me, I read the I read the YouTube comments sometimes. And somebody said, uh, he was talking about Kyle Shanahan. He's like, Kyle Shanahan on the hot seat. Why is Kyle on the hot seat? He's had two deep playoff runs, et cetera. And he's like, okay, he's had two deep playoff runs. And listen, I can I can make excuses. All right, here we go. We all got bills to pay, right? We all got bills to pay. We all got, you know, mortgages or we got rent, et cetera. We got business, whatever. You got to pay your bills. And if you don't pay them, you can come up with all these excuses. Well, I wasn't expecting my car to break down. Then my car broke down. And, and then that stopped me from being able to go to work here. But guess what? The mortgage people, they don't care. You got to pay your mortgage. You got to pay your rent. You got to pay your house. You got to pay your business. Whatever it is, right? Regardless of the circumstances. And right now, with Kyle Shanahan led team, and I don't want to, I don't want to come off as if I'm like fire Shanahan, but I do think that there's a lot of people that feel like. And listen, I said the title of this. Let's let's keep it real. All right, we're gonna keep it real today. We're gonna keep it real today. Me, Kyle Shanahan has not been good enough. Kyle Shanahan has not been good enough. We can make the excuses. We can talk about the rebuild. We can talk about whatever we want. But from a decision-making standpoint, however, whatever, right? And again, I, I can I can make all the excuses. I, I have. I have made all the excuses for this coaching staff. I've made all the excuses. Everything that y'all thinking, all the reasons why y'all think that this team isn't uh, reaching its full potential, and, and we say, well, because of this, and then, well, well, because of that. And then, you know, this, I've made all those excuses too. But at the end of the day, nobody cares. You got to figure it out. And right now, the bills aren't being paid. When you're three and four, year six, we could talk about injuries, we could talk about this and that. The Seahawks? Are the Seahawks? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm. The fucking Seahawks? First in the NFC West? The fucking Seahawks? Y'all know how y'all talked about it, the Seahawks. Y'all know how y'all talked about Seahawks. Everybody knows how the Seahawks were talked about before the season. Oh, Drew Luck, Geno Smith, good luck. Rookies at cornerback, good luck. You lost Bobby Wagner. You lost this guy. You lost that guy. Uh, you 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 lost. Uh, you know Chris Carson retired. You know. Oh man. Uh, you know DK McCaff. He's gonna really be upset now. First in the NFC West. So you got to figure it out. And. I'm all out of excuses for Kyle Shanahan. Now, this is a uh, quote-unquote analyst. And, and I say that, but y'all know, man. I'm just like y'all. I'm just like y'all. So I'm just talking football just like y'all. All right. But analyst Crocky talking to y'all, and I'm the one that tries to be a little, you know, even kill and not, not cause a little, uh, you know, chaos or anything in the, in the 49ers fan base. You know, I try to be the one that's like, nah, calm down, everybody. Like, okay, listen. But I think right now, for this episode... I am done calming down, and I'm trying to figure out why the 49ers are three and four, and the Seahawks are four and three. Now I know the 49ers kicked the Seahawks' ass. I know that, but at the end of the day, four and three, top of the top of the NFC West. And I'm looking at some of these other teams, and it's just like, why, why can't this team get it done, right? Chicago Bears got the same record as the 49ers. Like that, that's wild, right? A team with a new head coach, a team trying to figure it out with a young quarterback, a team that you look at their roster and kind of what was surrounding their roster, what not. They, they got the same record as the 49ers. They beat the 49ers. They got the same record. It, listen, and and I see, uh, listen, I'm, I'm looking at some of the comments. Having the most injured roster in the NFL, his, in his, I don't got my glasses on, so. Having the most injured roster in NFL history a couple of years ago was a crushing year. The year after that, the last season, we went to the NFC Championship game and gave it away. Hicks, I, I get you. I get you. But when we start looking at it as a whole, in its totality, right? And what is going on here? We are in year six. Not year one. Not year two. Not year three. And again, we have had two terrific seasons two terrific seasons two really really good not great because you didn't win at all but two really really good seasons but it, that's that's what that's what is oh well no you can't get rid of this guy at all and I'm not saying fire him I don't want anybody to mistake that but 
two really good seasons. You're in year six. This is your baby. This is your baby. Listen, I got a gym that I own. I talked about paying bills. I pay a decent amount every month. If I don't pay that loan, my construction loan back, who, who, do you think the bank cares? No, they don't care. They don't care. You got to figure it out. Kyle Shanahan has to figure it out. And, 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 and I get it. And again, the season is not done. I think some of these conversations are the same thing that we had last year. And there were a lot of people like, oh, NFC Championship game. Remember all those people that were like, fire Kyle Shanahan? Well, those people were fucking justified. They were justified. When the 49ers were 3-5, and five, and if you were upset, and you were saying, I don't know about Kyle Shanahan, I think that you were right to say that when the Niners were 3-5 and five and they had one winning season in five years. <laughs> you were right to say that. And right now, Again, we're back to questioning it, and we will see how it plays out. And hopefully, for our sake, it, it works out for the best. Because I think I'm a fan. Y'all a fan? I'm a super fan. Well, first of all, I always thought I was a super fan. And then when I go to these games, I realize I'm not like super. Okay, I'm a super fan, but there are super, super, super fans. So I'm not like the three supers. I'm just like one super. All right. But fan just like y'all. So I want this team to figure it out as well. But it's like, at some point, I don't know. It starts to look a little weird. All right, so we won't be on here that long. I am going on with my guy Grant Cohn next at the top of the hour. So here's the link to the chat. I want y'all to come on and just let's talk about it. Let's talk about how you feel about this. And I, I'm not saying, I don't think that Kyle Shanahan will be fired. But I, I want to know if you all think that there's a solution to what is going on outside of firing them. Now, the one thing, and if no playoffs in 23, will be Kyle's make or break year. Oh, so if, if no playoffs, 2023 will be uh, make. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's without being said. I mean, the, the, the seat is probably warm. It has to be warm. If, if, if the seat is not warm, then I feel like maybe, I don't know, Jed, I don't know, a little weird, right? Because, and this is what I mean by that. We watched Jed York fire Jim Harbaugh for their differences, right? And whatever their differences were. We, we watched him fire Jim Harbaugh. Okay, whatever. You go and hire Tom Sula. Tom Sula did not have the, or reach the, whatever Jed wanted for his team and his organization, Tom Sula did not reach that standard. So he fired him after one year. Then the next year, he hired Ch Ch Chip Kelly. We all saw it. it. was a disaster. Now the roster was trash. And it's like, man, you're blaming these uh, coaches more than you're blaming your sorry-ass GM, Trent Baalke, <laughs> right? But Chip Kelly's season was not to the standards or not even close or not even heading in the direction for what Jed York wanted. So, Jay York showed us, like, I'm not with the bullshit. Like, I'm not with it. All right? So, I got to figure this out. And he hired Kyle Shanahan. But I would think at this point, right, we're talking about six years in now, has Kyle shown that he can consistently reach the standard of what you want? And I would say not consistently. He's shown he has the ability twice now. But, man, there's a lot of weird stuff. And is it as simple as either Kyle's coaching uh, uh, strategies, how he sees the game, he sees things, how he is, or is it just, man, people come onto his offense and he has to counter it and he has to figure out a way to, to do that and maybe it takes this year. I, I don't know. So I want y'all to uh, answer this question first. Coming up, we got, we got my guy Javon. Javon, good morning, man. How you doing? Good morning, Crack. How's it going? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm trying to be cool. Trying to be cool. You know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. And the crazy thing is, I know, like, when I say stuff, I see people, like, talk about it on Twitter. So, I don't, I don't want anything I'm saying to be misconstrued. But I am right. just kind of questioning Kyle. And I'm curious to see if he can get out of it. What are you thinking? Uh, I believe he can get out of it. I mean, 
you know, we tend, we do tend to overreact at times, but I mean, he, he, right now he really is in a rough spot, but I mean, if you go back to the Denver game, um, I, I think he called a good enough game to win it, but it, even, you know, it was kind of, it was kind of more on Jimmy that game. That was probably his worst game ever. But even though that happened, he was still at the podium, like, Hey, this is my fault, you know, taking accountability saying that I got to do better, you know? So I feel like he, he does realize like, Hey, I'm messing up. I'm, I think he's taking accountability no matter what he could be saying to the media. But um, so I think he is trying to make some changes, make some adjustments, although it seems like that's hard for him to do, but I think it will, I think it will get out of this slump. And I think that also him signing CMC is him saying, Hey, I, I need another weapon because I can't pull through with what the, with the offense I got, you know, with, with the scheme I'm trying to run. It just, I just need something else to help me continue to continue to be better. So I think he's going to really form a form a strategy and uh, in a little bit of a different way that can show that, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm making some changes to how I'm moving this offense. And, um, and yeah, I think, I think it'll work out. I, th- I think it will. I, I'm, I'm really curious to see how he, how he game plans in the second half. Cause I think that's really the biggest problem he has is how, how he schemes up in the second half. But, um, but I, I, you know, I'm still optimistic. I, th- I think he'll pull through. Why do you think he'll be able to figure it out offensively? Well, I mean, you know, it, at this point, it's like, at this point, you, you got to understand, like, hey, we, we've made so many mistakes. We've made so many issues. And I, I, I really, main thing, main thing for me is probably just CMC being incorporated. Um, you know, he's him being so versatile. He hasn't had a running back like this, and he he knows how to utilize running backs. Uh, at the end of the day, so to have this one, uh, I think it's really gonna, I think it's really gonna have him show what he can really do to his full potential. You know, he hasn't had this in Atlanta or anywhere else he's been. So I, I think he'll be able to really, really dive into this playbook to a new way. All right, Javon, man, I appreciate you coming on. Staying nice, level-headed, you know, keeping me a little calmer. I like that. I appreciate that. Appreciate y'all. Hit the like, subscribe, let's go. Yeah, yeah, do what Javon said. All right, all right, next up, got my guy, uh, uh, Augie, uh, uh, Gee. <laughs> I have my little crazy way of spelling OG, 19 Okay, okay, OG, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, shout out to you, brother. I've been uh subscribing and all that for a while, and uh, yeah, you're doing good, brother. I oh, man, I appreciate re- that. Yeah, man, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to touch on the uh, the coaching thing. Like, so, just the same way that everybody wants Jimmy G to play because, like, they know who he is and, like, Trey is, like, a gamble. Well, like, getting rid of Shani and getting somebody else is a gamble, too. And, like all that first year head coach stuff and all that needs to be over with. Like if we do get rid of him, I don't want another coordinator that's never been a head coach at any level. I don't want no NF- ex NFL quarterback that's never been a head coach. If we if we go that way, but like it's it's a gamble to get rid of Stanley. So we just got to figure it out, and we have to get that O line, O line, O line. We need that. You know that situation taken care of, and I don't know why we don't invest more in that. And yeah, that's kind of what I got for you. All right, I hear you, and I do think that building up the rest of the roster would, would help, right? When you talk about the offensive line or anything, anything else that's going on. But it's like, isn't this roster talented enough, at least for the offense, right? Because that's my thing. If, let's say the defense getting their ass kicked. All right, that's one thing. But when you look on that offensive side of the ball. And you see Debo and Kittle and Ayu and Juszczyk and now McCaffrey and even other guys like Juwan Jennings that, that can contribute. And we saw Ray Ray McLeod score a touchdown, right? Like you see all these guys, should you be able to get a little bit more than the 20th uh, ranked scoring offense in the league? Like with that, like regardless of the offensive line, I feel like with that, should you be able to get a little bit more? I think, I think that Shani has trust issues. So like, like if some if he runs the ball with Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson fumbled, then 
he probably won't play Jeff Wilson for a minute. Or or if I you drop the ball, then ain't no more balls going his way or you know stuff. I think he got trust issues and, and like you know, other teams. If you fumble or you make a mistake, the next play they gonna like you give you a chance to redeem yourself. And I don't think like I don't think you know what I'm saying. I think he has trust issues, man. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Well, I'm gonna let you go, man. I appreciate it. And I think that is the issue. I think that is the issue, the, the trust issues. And at some point, you gotta let go, man. And you gotta let these guys have their ups and downs and figure it out. And that's the only way you're really gonna break through. And that's the only way that Kyle's gonna start to get that uh consistency from this team that he's looking for. But OG, I appreciate you coming on. Hey, hey, um, but real quick, oh, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know if you mind, but uh, I I uh I have a um a show on YouTube that I would like to uh, promote right fast. Is that okay? No, no, you can't promote your stuff on my show. No, I'm joking. Of course, it's cool, man. Of course, man. Come <laughs> on. Let everybody know where they can find all your stuff. Okay, so I have a, a TV show um on YouTube called Set Tripping, episode one, two, three, and four. It, uh, it's a show with the message. It's based out here in the Bay Area. Y'all, please check it out. Um. It's a lot of good content, and, and you guys will be very entertained. All right, Seth Trippin, where are you from, the town? Yeah, I'm from Oakland. I'm an Oakland Niner fan. You know what I'm saying? The Raiders was in L.A. when I was coming up. So, yes, sir, since yeah. 1979. Oh, yeah. All right, appreciate you, big dog. Let's go, faithful. All right. And maybe that's maybe it's as simple as that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we just got to maybe we just gotta stay faithful. Stay faithful to Kyle Shanahan, but... Oh no. Oh no. We we got some time. More people to uh come in here if you like. Here we go. Let's answer this uh super chat right here. Boom. Crocker, please tell the fans Kyle just not good making in game adjustments. I, I I would say that with his second half scoring, it would lead you to believe that. It's hard for me because I, I don't know what he's trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Now that's me. That's me giving him the benefit of the doubt. I think it is the easier, like the what they say, the low-hanging fruit, right? The one that's easier to pick is to say, this dude can't adjust. And that might be the issue. But I, I don't know if it's, he can't adjust or his players can't adjust or, from what they worked on. So is that the case? And if so, that still kind of comes back to coaching. Still kind of comes back to coaching. For a guy that, again, it, I, I'm being critical on him because – we are told that he's an offensive genius. We're told that he's an offensive genius. Everybody wants to use his offense, all this, that, and the other. It's easy for a quarterback, et cetera. And, and maybe it is as simple as Jimmy Garoppolo. But again, I'm looking at some of these other offenses. All right, Look at yards per game. And you look at some of their quarterbacks. Uh, obviously, at the top, you got Buffalo, Kansas City. Okay. New Orleans Saints have the second. They get the second most yards. All right, we'll, we'll try to we'll get to the points and all that, but New Orleans Saints get they average the second most yards per game. The second most yards per game, New Orleans Saints. Their quarterback is Andy Dalton. Detroit Lions, they're four. Uh, sixth is the Cleveland Browns. Seventh is the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, you you look at some of these teams that are ahead of the 49ers, and it's like how? Look at points. All right, points per game. 49ers are 20th. So you got the New York Giants ahead of the Niners, Jacksonville Jaguars, New England Patriots, uh, some of these other teams. The, the New York Jets, the New York Jets are scoring more points per game than the 49ers. The New York Jets. So that's when I start saying like, okay, I hear y'all on the Jimmy G thing. I hear y'all. The New York Jets? That's wild. That's a little... Atlanta Falcons, Cleveland Browns, Detroit Lions, New Orleans Saints. I mean, the, the, all these teams that are scoring more points per game than the 49ers, to me, that's crazy. That's crazy. And who, they, like, I don't care about, oh, I don't care about Jimmy G. That's crazy. Because Zach Wilson ain't been good. Joe Flacco not good. How do they score more points a game than the 49ers? Jets gang in here. <laughs> I don't know. All right, here we go. Um, oh, real quick, there's one more uh, thing that I wanted to get to. People are afraid to let Kyle go because they don't want to regress like before. 
Kyle and Harms. But you have to reach forward, not stay pat. Uh, I would say this, man, and I've talked about it before. I just feel like you can't play it safe. I feel any time, and we can all look at times, times in our life, when you play it safe, do you get good results? Or when you take a risk and you're like, whew, that risk paid off in a big way, right? I really feel like the, 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 big, the biggest payoffs is when you take a risk. That's what it's feel like. So I, I don't know. I, that's just my thoughts on things that I've done and had to go through. I talked to y'all about moving to fucking Arkansas. I live in Arkansas. And I was supposed to come out here a coach. That's why I came out here coach, get my degree, my wife get her RN. And they kind of flipped on me. And I had to figure it out. I had to pivot. And there was a time where I didn't have no money. And I had to back against the wall. <laughs> and I had to figure it out. And I took some risk. And I took some gambles. Not like illegally or anything like that. But, and the shit paid off. In a big way. In a big way. And then just all just these different things started coming my way. All right. But um, you got you to gotta take risk. I'm not. I'm, I'm the last person. I am not about playing it safe. I am not about playing it safe. I'm not. And I see somebody here real quick. Eddie, Kyle Shanahan is the definition of playing it safe. He is. And I think the fan base is trying to play it safe with him. What's up, bro? I met you in Atlanta. Game dressed like primetime. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Bro, I got the picture. Hold on, man. Hold on. I got the picture. In the phone, I just saw it the other day. Hold on. Got my dog prime time. Hold on, hold on. Where we at? Where we at? Yes, sir. Hold on. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I see you, man. I see you. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. That was cool. That was cool. Yeah, see, I got the picture and everything. Let's go. Medic Mike. Good morning, man. How you doing? What's happening, man? Good morning, crowd. Good morning, everybody. Like and subscribe for this great content. Um, Mike, does 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 Kyle Shanahan play too safe? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I think we've all been saying that for a little while. I mean, you've had problems with this conservative play calling for a minute. And what 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 was it? Uh, let your nuts hang. Man, you got to put mean, your put nuts on, on the table, man. Put them on the table. I'm saying. <laughs> nah, he uh he doesn't do that. And whether it's personnel or what, I don't know. Because when he was OC over in Atlanta. People were like, he's maybe he got PTSD from there. I don't know. People are like, he should have ran the ball. You know, he's too aggressive, too aggressive. And it backfired. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what his issue is, what his deal is. But at the end of the day, the head coach is responsible for the performance of the team. And we see what they've done offensively over the past six years now. And so some do you so think that people have figured out Kyle Shanahan's offense? I think that might be part of it. I think he has to evolve. I think he has to be able to look in the mirror and say, okay, I need to change something. Something's got to give. I mean, when you're, when you have that type of offense and you have, you know, the best left tackle in the game, you have the best blocking tight end in the game and you have one of the top run consistently, one of the top run uh, lines, run blocking lines in the game. And then on first down, you're, I think it's 26th. And when you run the ball and yards gained and you're fourth in passing, well, that tells me you're predictable. That tells me people are playing, like, just stop the run. Just stop the run. Because you've built your team to run, and people are like, oh, we know what your playbook is. We're going to stop that. So Kyle's going to have to be able to adjust and look at himself in the mirror and say, something's got to change. I got to get back to that creativity, getting my playmakers in space with the ball. Like I can count on one hand, how many times I've seen Debo on a little five yard, you know, pattern to where someone got rubbed or Kyle schemed him wide open. And now it's like, okay, let's cook. That wasn't a bubble screen. You know, we used to see that before. We don't see it anymore. So I don't know. I think it's a combination of the limitations of the offense and Kyle's scheme. And then you hear everyone say, Oh, he's a genius. And Steve Young said all the answers are actually built within the play. Yeah, That's cool. But if your personnel or your quarterback can't find certain answers and defense start to key on that, it's like, yeah, the answer may be built in this scheme, but he never gets to this answer. Well, then you become predictable. Then you become stale. Then you become an mm -hmm. offense with all these playmakers that can't score any points. Do we have time to turn it around? Absolutely. We were three and five last year. We went to the playoffs. 
made a, a pretty good run, but the offense has got to pick it up. They've got to hold up their end of the bargain, and it starts with Kyle. It starts with Kyle. Mike, man, I appreciate you coming on, bro. Yes, sir, man. All right. Shout out to my guy, Medic Mike. Man, we're, we're, we're all just trying to figure it out. I don't want anybody to come on here like, Croc is being negative. You just got to keep it real. Shit's not working. Whatever it is. At this uh, October 27th, uh, 8.37 a.m. Pacific time, whatever Kyle is doing is not working right now. So got to figure it out. What do the 49ers do from here? And not just 49ers. What does Kyle Shanahan do from here? How do you figure this out? Your quarterback who's, is who your quarterback is. So how do you figure out, like, these other teams who are ahead of the 49ers in scoring, they figured it out with their quarterbacks, whoever the hell that is. Brian Dayball shows up in New York with Daniel Jones, who I was laughing at Daniel Jones last year. Oh, y'all was laughing at Daniel Jones last year. And now Daniel Jones, and it's not like he's lighting the world on fire, but they're sure in the hell they're ahead of the 49ers in scoring. Now, not by much, but they are. <laughs> they're ahead of the 49ers in scoring. The New England Patriots, the Arizona Cardinals, their quarterback is very talented, but he can barely function, and he loses every time they got a new Call of Duty uh, tournament thing out. The Atlanta Falcons scoring more points in the, a game than the 49ers. The Cleveland Browns. And the Cleveland Browns got Jacoby Brissett at quarterback right now. It's not even the uh, booty tickler, man. The booty, the booty bandit. It's not, it's not even him. So, Kyle, you got to figure this out. So now what we're doing, we're just holding Kyle accountable. We're holding Kyle accountable. I see uh, 1870 says, I trust Kyle. I I definitely, I don't trust Kyle, but I give him the benefit of the doubt. So is that the same as kind of trusting him? I don't know. I don't trust him. I kind of do. I give him the benefit of the doubt based off what he's done in the past. Whereas like, Okay, I know I saw you have a great offense with Atlanta. I've, I've seen you have a legit offense with the 49ers. I've seen this team kind of turn things around. So I give him the benefit of the doubt based on those things. But he, he, makes it, he makes it hard. Pause. Wow. Wow. Pause. He makes it difficult to fully trust him. Lloyd, good morning, man. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? Who, who is the, the booty bandit? <laughs> Deshaun Watson. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. But my my question is, um, are we letting our star players, Debo Samuel, he's got, let me see, seven drops so far mm. in the season. Last season combined, he had 10. At this, and at this point right now, he got seven. Are we letting – I mean, I know everybody loves Debo, you know, um, but he's not a pure wide receiver. Not like a, a Brown or somebody who can really run routes. I mean, he, he get the ball and he go. But for what? But that's the same player Christian McCaffrey is. Christian, Christian McCaffrey and Debo Samuel are almost the same player, except Debo, Debo is a lot more powerful, you know, at the end of the catch. Yeah, but Debo's so you, just bigger. <laughs> He's just yeah. Bigger. So, he so you got the same player there. You got Kittle, um, who when you put him next to um, Kelsey last week, which guy would you take? Like, it was no comparison on who the better player was between him and Kelsey. I mean, Kelsey shrugging guys off him, like, get off me. <laughs> so, I mean, we. I think Kyle, I hated the way he um, ran Trey into the ground. Yeah. But at the same time, like, where are your star players at? I mean, D Debo is, is, is not doing anything. Trent Williams put on the uniform. I, I heard he was hurt, but I mean, he letting guys run right past him. Yeah. So I mean, that's where I'm at. I could be wrong. So. So I'm you're saying burning. the, the when when I say out loud, you know, you got all these guys. You got Debo. You got George Kittle. You got Trent Williams. You got Kyle Juszczyk. And it's like, yeah, you got those guys, but maybe they're not. They're, they're not, not holding up their end of the bargain. You ever been playing a pickup basketball game, right? And you know you got the better team, but for some reason the chemistry's not there. Maybe you got one guy who's just concentrating on himself. But that's not the coach's fault. That's more so, guys, y'all – I mean, because the, the the body language, and I hate to just pick on Debo, but just – I mean, you got paid. 
And your body language on Sunday was not the same as what I saw last season. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, look, I don't part know. Part of it, so Debo <laughs> Samuel, he's a very uh, in, intriguing, I think that's mm -hmm. the word, because clearly, like, when Debo's on, come on, man, how many football players are better than him? In no, NFL, no, no, right? they're not, yeah. When, when he's on, it's crazy. But there's, there's this, like, other side of Debo where – I don't know. He, he clearly takes his job very serious, but mm -hmm. I think he he's like the he's like the the C student, <laughs> or or he has the potential to be an A student, uh -huh. but he does just enough just to pass the class. Right. And I think we're seeing <laughs> kind of maybe some of the results of that for someone who has the ability to be an A plus student, right? And it's like, dude, you're so smart, like. Right. You know, why don't you just study just a little bit? And I was like, nah, like I'll study like the night before a test. Right. And then Nick Bosa too. Like, come on, man. Like you getting get murdered out there. I mean, even when it just came, people was talking about the the run and him letting plays go on the run, but in the passing game, we had zero pressure. Yeah. And and it, and it came right. At, see, he was getting pressure before those two false start. I mean, before those uh two. They got, um, him, they got him to be a little start. shy, huh? Yeah. So he got shy after that. He like so. I mean, I don't know. I, like I said, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just observing, but I do yeah, I know, know. We just try to figure it out together, man. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I appreciate yeah. the, the time, man. All right, Lloyd. All right. All right. Here we go, John Chapman. John, you 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 were. I swear, I text John Chapman. Oh, now he responds. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. This is how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna send this to John Chapman real quick. Or actually, John, just click the link in the chat. But nobody else click it because I got to get out of here in 15 minutes because I got to go on with uh, Grant Cohn. But I got uh, I just put the link in the chat, John. Feel free. Hop on if you're free. All right. Got a couple super chats here. Let me answer these real quick. Oh, one is John Chapman. <laughs> Thank you, John. I appreciate it. I, I, I love that you love the show. I love your show, too, and I can't wait to see you uh, this weekend. I'm actually, I'm actually bringing my wife, too. So this is the first time I'm bringing my wife to like any of the 49ers stuff. All right. Uh, Kittle and Kelsey both had 96 yards and six catches. Stop it. Yeah, so, yeah, Kittle, can't, can't say Kittle. You know what? And the crazy thing is, if you just look at the numbers, the players showed up. Like, Ayuk did good again. Kittle, he did good again, right? Debo, he had an average day for him, like, but close to 50 yards. So it was like, you know, the, the, the players that you want to show up, they contributed for sure. Just wasn't enough. All right, here we go. I don't even want to like try to say your name, but you you could give your name. Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, no, no, I am gonna try. Hold on, Miss Miss Mosquito Killer, Mosquito Killer. Oh, Mosquito. Okay, I like how you did that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They sorry, I tried to make it a little unique or whatever. Um, <laughs> it's actually literally my job. I literally go out and kill mosquitoes. So. It's oh yeah, nice. Unique. Yeah. You have a fun I'm, time with that out here in the south. Oh yeah, dude. They, it's it's this funny thing. I'm actually out here at a pasture land right now, uh, then getting ready to go out and do my thing. But I wanted to give a call in. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. I appreciate that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I even met you in Atlanta uh, at the road trip and stuff like that. We took a picture yeah. together. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was good to meet you, man. By the way, uh, so, um, but I just wanted to come on. Um, I think that you're you're in a sense right about Kyle Shanahan. Um, I think it's a little bit his fault. But I think it's more of like he's we're continuing to still make year after year after year the same mistakes of like penalties uh, that just doesn't seem like it's like really good penalties, like the false starts, the holdings, the, the like they, it's just the same type of penalties over and over again. Right. But just like the last uh, guy that was on uh, list or whatever, uh, I will agree about I think. More of it relies on the players because you got Jimmy, who's a nine-year vet, and then he's throwing up a Hail Mary ball, like, out out, out on a five-yard line. It's yeah, like, that's really uh, wild, huh? Like, a, a five-yard yeah. Hail Mary is, sounds yeah. kind of wild. You're like, like, what are you doing? Like, that's something you would expect, like, when Nick Mullins was in there on his, like, second year and stuff like that. You're like, that's something I expect from him. I don't expect nine, a nine-year vet like Jimmy to turn around and throw a ball up like that, you know? And, and, and then you turn around. And you're watching people like Ayuk running, um, what's that little little zigzag route thing, stuff like that. And he's running out wide open, and he's jumping up and down because he's pissed because he got missed. 
He's like, I'm standing here wide open, dude. What are, what are you doing? So to turn around and say, like, hey, yo, this is Kyle's fault because he's scheming the dudes open, or you got Jeff Wilson Jr. running a uh, Texas route, wide open. Wide open, butt naked, and, blown coverage. Here, here's my question, though, Mosquito Killer. Yeah. W- do we put any of this on Kyle for not being able to get Jimmy to see the field a certain way? Or is it just Jimmy's just a lost cause? Because I, I feel I like, like say your kids, right? Your kids yeah. at home. If my kid keeps making the same mistakes over and over, at some point I have to look at myself. Like, well, I'm not, I'm, there's something that I'm yeah. not doing to get through to yeah. my kid. No, and I, and I agree. Like, I do, I do think that it's a lost cause because I think that that's what they were trying to do, obviously, with Trey Lance. I feel like the running a little bit more early in the season – and if, I don't know if you've noticed, like, we are passing a lot more this season. And I, I really am thinking that that was a playbook more set up for Trey to start passing. Like, we started off running up a little bit in the beginning, but it was like it was going to build up to this more passing. And I don't think he's went back to – because why haven't we been running the ball more? Why have we been abandoning it so much more? But I think that uh, – I, I guess you could put a little bit on Kyle uh, to understand, like, hey, haven't you got – uh, Jimmy ready, but at the same time, it's like, how many times could Jimmy go, or Kyle go up there and be like, hey, Jimmy, look, you see this is a zero blitz. You see you can recognize that this is coming, like, and as a nine-year vet, like, how do you not recognize, hey, there's a zero blitz coming, uh, I know I got Jeff Wilson coming out on the Texas route, instead I'm going to throw a Hail Mary pass up, you know, to really right. catch it, or, um, like, recognizing, hey, I got Ayuk one-on-one on the outside with this guy, like, and I know he's got this little route, like, little, and then little anticipate. Uh, and the anticipation throw, like, hey, he's cutting in. Let me whip it right now out. And by the time he breaks out, you know, even if it's only a half yard ahead, if you throw in that right spot, he's a half yard ahead. Right. But Jimmy doesn't throw those anticipation routes. He waits to see if the guy's open. Oh, did you break on your route? Okay, you are open. Now I'll throw it. And that's what's kind of got him. Even that one interception in Atlanta to Debo, like, if you look at it, uh, where it got tipped up, another guy intercepted it behind. If you look, if he would have thrown that in anticipation route when Debo cut, he was wide open. But then by the moment he threw it, it was like Debo, by the time he was open, all of a sudden yeah, he was running right into the Yeah. And it was like, you, you got to throw those anticipation routes, man. It can't be like, it, it was weird. He did that so well with Emmanuel Sanders that year we got Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. He was like, he was throwing it on an anticipation, like, hey, Emmanuel Sanders knows where he needs to be. Boom, I'm going to throw it. And Emmanuel Sanders breaking out his route, and there's the ball right there to him. It's like why why can't you do that with your players now? Like, and I will give it a little bit on the other players too. Not this last game, but the game before. Every time uh, I would say Jimmy has thrown it deep to Ayuk, not just the shallow, not the the slant routes or the shallow, but every time he's thrown deep, even when he first took over for Trey Lance, he threw that that long ass out, out route, and Ayuk dropped it. So another deep route to Ayuk uh, uh, was it the next week or whatever? Yeah, and he dropped it. And then he turned around, throw it to uh, in Atlanta. Throw it. He did throw the one out route deep, and but Ayuk was wide open. But when it was a little bit covered, throw it deep to Ayuk had to you go up, battle for that ball, and it was like he kind of like little half half jump in the air, and yeah, he dropped it. It's like you like Ayuk, you got it, man. You, that's part of the reason why we went out and got you, man. In the first round, like bro, go up. He got to make ball. those big plays. Yeah, like the, got, the like, opportunities. You, but Mosquito Killer, I got to get you out because I got to yeah, get a couple no more way. people on right, uh, yeah, before yeah. I get out of here in a few minutes. All right, man. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. All right, here we go. So uh, real quick, let me go to John Chapman. We got John Chapman in the house. What's good, man? Uh, always good to be with you, Croc. Yeah, man. I, I'm excited for this weekend. My wife is actually coming, and she hasn't been to any of these things with me. So I'm like, oh. yeah, man, we're going to go to uh, Chapman's event. We're going to go to the game. We got the tailgate going on, and she hasn't done any, any of this. So she's going to Man, she's that's awesome. I, I Yeah, I haven't met your wife, so this is going to be great. I've met a lot of the fam, uh, but this is going to be good. We've we got a lot of stuff planned. This weekend's going to be – I like to do every city different. Um, and so for the 40 hours rush trip this weekend, we're doing a little bit more posh than normal. Uh, we got a little bit of a light kind of, uh, posh club in LA going from three to eight, which is going to be nice. We got some VIP tables and stuff. I have to hook you up, Croc. We got you. I respect that Def Leppard t-shirt, by the way. I'm yeah, just saying, you know, to be honest. And I saw somebody in the chat say, Croc, can you name one Def Leppard song? No, I cannot. I do listen to Queen, but no Def Leppard. 
Fair enough. Fair enough, man. But I love the <laughs> chat. I love uh, just the community that you're building here, man. I've been listening for a little bit. I missed your text. So that's all me, man. I apologize. I, I totally Yeah, I was actually text. in the bathtub and I'm like, you know, what? I'm thinking about John Chapman. I'm going to tell him to text him and, and see if he wants to come on and promote the uh, promote the that's uh, what's uh, the up, rush. Man. But yeah, so we got a great trip uh, planned out this weekend. So if you're coming out to LA, 49ersRushRoadTrip.com. We got a Saturday party from 3 to 8. A lot of giveaways. Uh, bought way too much stuff on Pristine Auction. We're going to be hooking everybody up. Competitions, as we always do. And then we got our tailgate. which The tailgate's going to be pretty great this weekend because we're in the RV lot. So we get in an hour early than everybody else. So we're starting at 9.30. We've got TVs up. So if you don't have tickets to the game and you just want to party with the faithful in the parking lot, Unlimited beers, drinks, liquor, everything. Watch the game the whole time there. That's all. Are you going to be doing that, or are you going inside? I'm I'm planning on going in. I never get my tickets till the day of because I'm cheap. Uh, so I wait for them to drop. Then I Same. buy them last minute. Um, so, but yeah, I'm planning on going in. I, I like SoFi Stadium. I, I enjoy going to the games there. Yeah, see, I mean, I don't really care to go in. So if you were going to stay out there the whole time, I would too. But if you're going in, then I'll, I'll go in. I ain't going to stay hey, out there chatting. Well, we, we might have a conversation then because uh, yeah. we might just party it up all day out there, man. Why not? Yeah, why not? That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm down with that. Yeah, we'll see how it looks. Uh, I'll gauge the the tailgate and how it goes. But, man, I'm totally cool. You want to hang out? We can, just, we, we can record in the parking lot and have a couple drinks, have a good time, man. That sounds great. That sounds like a fun time to me. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So uh, anyway, Croc, I know you're trying to jump off. I know you're the busiest man in showbiz. <laughs> uh, but thanks for letting me jump on here. 49ersRushRoadTrip.com. We've got uh, every single road game, including the Dolphins game. Um, and if you're going to Mexico, are you coming out to Mexico City? I am not going to Mexico. I don't All think I can right. get my passport in time. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, if any of your listeners are going to Mexico City, we got discount hotel rates up on the site. Uh, you can stay with us at the Marriott Reforma where we're throwing the parties. We're taking charter buses from our hotel to the party, to the game, and back to the hotel. So you don't have to worry about anything. We got transportation. We got parties. We got the game. Everything set up for you. All that's up over there, 49ersRushRoadTrip.com. All right, all right, Chapman. I'll see you this weekend. Appreciate it, man. Take and care. And hope bro. to see y'all too, man. Hope to see y'all too. We're going to be there. We're going to be turning up all that good stuff. Love it, man. Peace. All right. All right. Shout out to my guy, John Chapman. I got a couple people I'm about to get on before we get out of here. Got some super chats to get to real quick. And I saw a funny one here. Uh, Croc was on his rev run. Bro, it, it's, what's this, once that temperature stops, it starts to drop. Oh, man. I'm super rev run in there. Super rev run. Bubble bath. I got this big old jacuzzi tub. Me and my wife, we fit in there comfortably. Oh, yeah. Once the temperature starts to drop, it's over. It's over. The shower, done. Bathtub me, please. Well, I do take a shower, then get in the bathtub, you know. I'm going to sit in my own dirt. But anyways, let me get to these super chats real quick. We got Eddie, and he says, I'm frustrated. Jimmy is bad, and players have to execute. But Kyle is putting Jimmy, McGlinchey, et cetera, on the field. Ultimately, it's his fault. I will say, as it pertains to Jimmy, really both of them, right? But Jimmy, no, Jimmy, for sure. Jimmy was a backup quarterback. So I don't 100% fault him for having Jimmy on the field. All right, but McGlinchey, yeah, that's on him. They picked up his fifth-year option. Yeah, not great, not great. All right, we got Darius here. He says, Jimmy G hit the game winner uh, to Wilson a few years ago with anticipation, <laughs> stated that he couldn't even see him. What happened to that guy? I don't know, man. I feel like Kyle would be, like, like stripping guys of their confidence and stuff. I don't know. Man, I could be wrong. I got to talk to some 49er players. Like, hey, man, like, does he instill confidence in y'all? I have heard that he just... He just holds everybody to a certain standard. And if you're not reaching that standard. All right, here we go real quick. I got Twin Maker, a.k.a. Ryan in here. What do you do, my guy? How you doing, man? What's up, man? How you doing? Man, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Hey, so my opinion on your boy uh, when he's talking about, I think Brandon Ayuk and George killed when they both had like 98 yards or something of that nature. I think that was a game where Brandon could have had a buck 50 and George could have had a buck 25. Mm. Um, it's, it's too often we see we don't see a consistent workload in those guys. Um, somebody was giving a basketball analogy, right? If a, a player scores, say, 18 points in the first half and in the second half they give up six points and they, oh, they had 24 points in the game, on the stat line it looks like they had a good game. But in if you watch the game, they disappear. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that happened also in Atlanta. Brandon, you ooh, two touchdowns, 78 yards. Oh, he had a good game. But in the second half, what happened to him? He faded away. And yeah. so 
that confidence, I think it happens like there's a lack of confidence when you're a hooper or a football player, when you're not knowing I'm going to consistently get these plays called throughout the game. You know, and I think a guy like Travis Kelsey or Cooper Cup, they know without a shadow of a doubt, they go get their targets, but they go get it in a flow. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I think a lot of our explosive players like Brandon Ayuk or George Kill, they're missing a flow throughout the game where they're consistently getting fed. And another thing, I don't care how many yards we may get, we ain't getting touchdowns either. We barely scrape, like scraping 20 points yeah. a game. Like that's, come on, man. That's low hanging. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah, so it's like, man, until we get touchdowns and these guys, like, Brent you should have a 125-yard pass game by now. He should with two touchdowns. You know, George Kittle should have had a, a buck 50 game by now. You know what I mean? And so that's my thing is, is like we have to really utilize these guys in a flow. And I think Kyle is so structured and so rigid. The, we don't get a consistent flow. That's where we see a lot of the elves and flow in our offense where it's not necessarily consistent being a good offense. Man, I appreciate that content right there. All right, Ryan, I'm gonna get out of here. Peace out, my guy. All right, here we go. Last caller, I got, I got Roscoe's. Chris, what's good, man? So, Croc, you gotta go on Grant, huh? Yeah, two minutes. All right, I got, I got thirty seconds. I just want to say, we're on to the uh, Rams. Everything else that happened in the, in the uh, season is the past. We got to move forward. So, while you know, I know Kyle Shanahan is conservative on all this stuff. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. And uh, we're going to beat the Rams, baby. I'll be at SoFi Stadium. I'm going to be excited. The 49ers, 33. Yeah, we're putting up some points today, today this week. 33-13. We out of here. All right, let's get it. All right, shout out to my guy, Chris. Uh, dropping the mic on that one. And shout out to everybody that listened to the this show. I won't be here tomorrow. I'll be traveling to L.A. But uh, if you guys want to catch more of me, go tune in right now. Grant Cohn's show, I'll be over there right now. But I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. I saw somebody say, Croc, you're the only thing that gets me through the season. Y'all the only thing that gets me through the season. Otherwise, I'd probably be going crazy if I wasn't able to get all this out. All right. But um, I'll be back uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, because I'll be traveling back Monday. Tuesday morning, I'll be back, and we'll talk through all this all over again. But until then, I'm out. Peace. Love you. It is picked up by Aaron Crocker over midfield. He'll run it all the way into the end zone. Touchdown. The Crop Talk TV Podcast. Podcast. Peace.